Four mice and one pack rat. That's excellent for one night. Springtime is here and all of the rodents are coming back to life. And a bunch of my traps have finally broken after three full years. So from the beginning, I started out with 10 of these traps. These are the rat size traps made by that company called Jaws. And they finally all worn out and broken. I have only two of them left. And in that time, in three years, I stopped counting at 500. I'm guessing now it's probably in the neighborhood of close to 600. So that's about 600, roughly 600 or more rodents that I've killed in three years. So it's time to get new traps. And instead of going with the better name brand, I decided to go with the cheap ones off of Amazon. So I got an eight pack of these, which have a bait cup that you can keep covered up. Meaning that if the trap gets sprung, something won't come along and eat all the bait, which does happen with the, uh, it does happen with these Jaws traps. So um, they don't have quite as big a spikes as the Jaws traps, but uh, but as you can see, they still work really good. Look at that, grabbed onto a screw like it was nothing. And then I have, what, 12 of these small ones for mice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount them all to a piece of wood. And the reason why is I've learned out here, the pack rats will take off if, if you just bait a trap like this or like this and just leave it out, they'll run off with the trap. So I've learned to put it onto a board. Plus when it's mounted on a board, it makes it, makes it really, really firm. So it triggers really easily. If your trap is sitting on something soft, okay, and it allows it to move a little bit, it, it, your trap won't be quite as sensitive and you wanna make sure it gets triggered real easy. You wanna get a good kill. So, and by the way, I don't use poison, so this is how I control the rodent population here. So the first thing I need to do is cut a bunch of boards to, to length, and then I'm gonna start screwing these things down. This board is already the right length, so let me show you what I do. Basically, I'm just gonna take, uh, I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna take a screw, I'm gonna put it in through the hole they got here. Actually, I've already got a hole going there. There we go. Okay, and you wanna make sure that it still triggers properly. Yep. Okay. And then I'm gonna put one more screw. Yes, my bit is wore out. I need a new one. Okay, time to start cutting some boards. Take my trusty Ryobi saw. Where did I put the battery in? Okay, right here. All right. Okay, I got all the screws set up and I got a bunch of boards set up here ready to go. A couple of them are some odd length but I'm just using up scrap wood. And then I'm going to make one long one with, uh, I think I'm going to do four of these in a row. I've noticed that uh, these rodents seem to be attracted to death. Uh, if I have a spot where there's been a kill, uh, they seem to be attracted to it, so I'm going to go with that. Well, I guess these are going to have to be set loose. There's no way to screw these little ones on. I mean, I guess that was why it was only like, you know, 10 or $12 for 12, so... <laughs> 
I get, you get what you pay for. All right, well, anyway, let's mount the rest of these here. Try not to break this plastic. Okay. All right, that seems to work. Well, so each one's gonna have to be custom adjusted. There's just no way around it. See what I'm doing right here? This is the trigger. See that? That's the trigger. So I'm making sure that this still moves real easy. As long as it falls down with gravity, it's working real easy. So what happens is, is when I set it, okay, I can now notice I'm holding the tension off. I can actually take a little bit of that away. That one's going to be pretty sensitive. So pretty much there it is. And you can see, see if I can trigger it with just a piece of plastic. Nope. I'm going to take something a little more. All right, let's see how easy this triggers. Yep, it's pretty easy. Pretty easy. So you want to know what works, people. This is what works. If you have an off-grid property or you're out boondocking a lot and you're worried about mice, rats, pack rats, especially if you're here in Arizona, this is how I keep them out. So far in three years, I've only had two rodents get into the RV and I got them, I got both of them. Otherwise, I kill everything when it's still outside before it ever comes in. I don't believe in putting my traps inside the rig. You're just encouraging them to come in to get killed. I'd rather kill them when they're outside. And believe me, if you think I'm affecting the population at all, I'm not. I haven't been able to make one single bit of difference out here in how many rodents we have. For every one I kill, there's 20 more. Okay, I came up with a pretty cheap solution. I'm just gonna use nails. Yep, I'm gonna use nails. And it's gonna work out really nice. I'll show you. See, put a nail in, bend it, so this thing really only goes on, as you can see, it's only gonna go on one way. And uh, yeah, they're not gonna fall off real easy, so. That's gonna keep them from walking off on me. Looks like about right. I'm just eyeballing the whole thing, inventing it as I go. Look at that. I've got four fastened onto one. So look at that. I'm just going to set this down and I guarantee you this might be the most successful I have because like I said, if there's a dead body sitting on one of these, it'll attract a whole bunch more. And then as I get kills on this, if I just dump the dead bodies right next to here, it just attracts more. I don't know why, but they are more attracted to the death than anything else. Sometimes
Okay, back off. Okay, so I'm baiting these traps and I'm using just peanut butter and pecan chunks. And these are the little tiny bait cups that are out of the small traps. So I'm gonna make like a little assembly line here. Gonna get, get another rag going here. This ends up being pretty messy. Okay, so I'm gonna take a bit of the peanut butter, get it down into that cup. Yep, that's looking decent, I guess. Another one, another chunk in there. Another chunk in there. Another chunk in that one. And what the peanut butter does is it kind of helps to keep the helps to keep the pecan chunk in there. Remember that when they get killed, they're not going to eat any of this. So this bait will probably be in here for six months or more. Honestly, my other traps in three years, I think I've only rebaited them like five times maybe. That's it. You'd be amazed how long this stuff goes, especially if, especially if as it starts to kill them, it starts to get gory parts and hair and body parts and stuff stuck to there. That attracts them all by itself. Okay, so you can see I've got each one, I'll show you, I've got each one filled and you can see it's not perfect. I mean, I, I spilled a little bit, I mean, I got a little bit on the outside there, who cares? It really doesn't matter. Okay, now, now I'm gonna put a pecan chunk just like this right down there in the middle, okay? Right in the middle of that bait cup on each one. And I'm just kind of grabbing a, some pecan chunks and if it doesn't fit, I'm just kind of forcing it in there and let it break up and fill up that little bait cup. The big thing they're gonna go after, believe it or not, more than the peanut butter I've noticed is the pecan. The fresh nut, they just cannot help themselves. And hopefully we're gonna get us a nice big fat pack rat. Yep, that's right, huh, Scout? We're gonna get a nice big fat pack rat, aren't we? Yep. Okay, now you can see I've got my bait cups full, okay? So now I'm gonna put the lids back on them and lock them in place. Okay, nice. I like that little door that it has, that, this little thing that covers up the bait cup. I, thought, I like that. I think that's pretty smart. There's many a times where those jaws traps have been triggered. The ones I've had, they've been triggered and um, it didn't catch anything. And then lots of other little creatures will come back and they'll eat all the bait. So this protects the bait. All right, there it is. I've got eight traps totally fully loaded. All right, now I'm gonna work on filling these small bait cups, okay? So I'm just gonna put like a blob in there like that, and then I'm gonna put a nut in there like that and kind of just break the end of it off a little bit, I guess, and then there's one. I guess I should just put that down into there like that. I'm not sure if what I'm doing is gonna really work. I just don't know. I've never done these little bait cups before, but just like I thought, it's pretty messy. Sitting outside in the weather, eventually it will take its toll on your traps. And uh, my other ones I had to, uh, I ended up having to put some oil on the, on the mechanisms and stuff. I should have filmed myself doing that last year. But yeah, I had to put, uh, I put some really expensive gun lubricant on there and it worked beautifully. Okay, there they are. They're all loaded up. Okay, and I'll show, this is how you put these little bait cups back in. Okay, just basically drop that in there, turn it until it stops turning. And then you can see when I open it up, there it is. The bait cup's all nice and full. Okay, let's do another one. Yep, there it is. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna go put these other ones in down there because they're still attached. So now all I have to do is take all these traps basically and go place them all, arm them, and wait to hear them snap. I'll bet, well, 
I'll tell you what, I will come out and record in the morning. We'll find out just how many I get. Well, we got 15 traps. Let's see what we can do. Okay, let's check the traps here. We got, got one there. Yep, got another one over there. I see one over here by the car. Backup scout. Yep, got one in the little trap. Leave it alone, scout. Okay, those are two. I cleared that one out last night, so. Okay, so that one's been tripped with nothing. And this one has been tripped with nothing. Okay. okay two little traps there, nothing there. And watch out, Scout. Ooh, got another one here. That looks like a, that is a pack rat. That's a baby pack rat. See how short the tail is? I got me a baby pack rat. Look at that. Nice. Yeah, that short tail, that's a, that's how you know it's a pack rat. Cool. All right, leave it, Scout. Scout, leave it. Scout, leave it. Hey, leave it. Come on, leave it. Come on. Good girl. Good girl, leave it. Good girl. Yeah, she likes to check out the dead stuff. But she's been good, good about leaving stuff. Okay, then I put two traps over here by this pack rat nest. Let's see what we got over here. Okay. Ooh, we got another one sprung. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That's a mouse. You can tell by the long tail. Okay, leave it, Scout. Leave it. I'll come back and clear all these traps and all. Okay, so here's here's a pack rat nest. And it's still not triggered yet. I'm gonna leave that there. Four mice and one pack rat. That's excellent for one night. Morning number two. Let's check these traps. Okay, there's another mouse. Come on, Scout, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Scout, leave it alone. Come on. Come on. And we've got another mouse there. Okay, we've got an unsprung trap here by the where the rabbits go in and out. Got a sprung trap with nothing. Ooh, and the rabbits dug another hole. So we okay, so got two mice so far. Oh, yep, there's another one. Leave it, Scout. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Okay, so there's another one. Leave it, Scout. Come back for that later. Come on. All right. That's three mice. All right, let's come over here by the tent trailer. Nope, those two traps are clean. What do we got? Oh, got something here. That looks like a pack rat. It is. It's another baby pack rat. Look at that. Wow. You notice these are all good clean kills. When they gets them on the head like that, that's uh, that's a good trap. All right, so that's two pack rats in two days. Nice. Let's go. Let's go. All right, I only got two more traps to check. Two more traps to check. The ones I put over here by the pack rat nest. Let's see what we got going on over here. Oh, Scout already found one. Okay, there's one mouse. Okay. Yep. There's, oh, look at this. Look at that. Okay, Scout, leave it, leave it. Hey, hey, leave it, leave it. Scout, leave it, Scout. Leave it, it's dead. Hey, hey, leave it, it's dead. It's dead, baby. Yeah, she knows it's a pack rat. So that's a pack rat, baby. Or, all right, everybody, so that's a pack rat. You can see they're quite a bit bigger. Oh, once again, we got a good kill. But this is, uh, that's a pretty decent sized one. Let's see, is it, what is it, a male? Nope, it's female. So, okay, so we got a female and two babies. Hey, leave it. I said to leave it. Leave it, Scout. Leave it. Leave it. She she remembers when she killed the other one. She's making sure it's dead. Okay, it's dead. Okay, leave it. Hey, leave it. Come on, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Look at her frustration. Leave it. Leave, leave it. <laughs> Scout, I told you to leave it. Hey, look at her frustration. She's like, I don't want to leave it. I want to bury it. Come on, let's go. Hey, come on, I promise you can get one. Come on, I promise you can get one later. Look at her frustration, this is awesome. Come on you, let's go. Scout, leave it. Hey, I said leave it. I said leave it. Come on, 
Let's go. Come on. Come on. Make sure when you look at the rodents in your traps, look at what their health looks like. Are they skinny? Are they fat? Does the fur look healthy? Is it ratty or matty? Um, all of these look like they came from a pet store, you know, especially the big pack rat. I mean, that thing's fur was perfect. There it is, people. That's my system. And you can see it works. And